Hi everybody, I'm Tim Johnson, Associate Editor for American Woodworker Magazine, and I'm here with Alan Laser, wood turner, and the author of American Woodworker's Turning Wood Department. In the February-March issue of American Woodworker, Alan shows how to make these two-piece spinning tops. And now we're going to tell you how to create this marbled finish that you see on the top of the surface. Alan, why don't you explain All how right. it's done? Okay, here is a whole selection of things that I've marbled. Uh, many of these are top bodies that I'm going to show you how to do. These round ones with no holes are inlays for lidded boxes. <laughs> Here's some eggs. <laughs> This is even Here's this a, is a bowl. This is the bottom of a wooden bowl. But I didn't do it all the way around. I just wanted to show, you know, that it was still wood. And then something very unique that was done by another a real marbler uh, onto a tool handle. I thought was pretty <laughs> pretty unusual. Yeah. Uh, what you're going to need are some very basic supplies. And I want to stress, I'm a wood turner. I'm not a professional marbler. I'm still at a first grade level of marbling. So I'm going to show you the most basic way I know to do it. The materials you're going to need is. First off, since we're using acrylic paints, a uh, substance called carrageenan. It's derived from a seaweed. It's uh, evidently non toxic, used in ice cream and things. And I'm going to mix it according to its instructions. I mix up a half gallon of it here. And you mix it up in a blender for about a minute. It's a thickening agent, really. It's just, what it's it's just doing. water and, and carrageenan. Water and carrageenan, okay. and it was two tablespoons per gallon, and I okay. cut it in half. You let it rest for about 12 hours. Okay. It's good for about three days normally, as a rule okay. of thumb, before it okay. starts going bad. I have a tray here, and when I do just top, sometimes I'll do even a little butter dish. You don't need okay. a very big area to okay. do top bodies. And I have this one, though, with a white bottom. I can really see my okay. colors. So you, nice you've poured the solution into this tray. Right. Okay, and what, what's the purpose of, of putting, of mixing that solution? Why can't you just use water? If you tried to put water-based colors on water, chances are it's either going to disperse odd or it's going to sink or it's going to mix. So what this does, it changes the quality of the water and you can actually float a water-based paint on top. Oh, okay. So that's very okay. important. It's called a sizing. So a, another way of, uh, an older way perhaps of, of doing this would be to use oil paints on Onto water. water. Oil paints, of course, would just float. Right. But since, and since you're using water-based paints. These are much easier to control, to get patterns. Than and oil the drying based. time, drying point time for oil paints is re oh, remarkably sure. long. These okay. are very fast. So there are lots of advantages to using water-based or acrylic paints. It's got a lot of downsides, but it's actually the easier way to go about okay. it. Because for a woodworker, and, and you're especially. using this is a liquid. You're not using the stuff from the tube. Right. It's liquid. You got to shake it up. But I'm okay. still going to thin it down, probably 50 percent okay. to float. Otherwise, if okay. I put it on like this, it'll sink to the bottom. I use a uh, brand I use is Golden, but I've also had luck with very inexpensive liquid acrylics from a hobby shop. They've worked okay. equally so these, well. So these materials, this is something that you can get at a hobby store or a paint supply store. Well, a, a art supply store art supply for carrageenan, these kind of colors, and a few of the other little items I'm going to mention. They're not okay. expensive. Not expensive so not, and not hard to find. Either. No, not okay. really. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need something to mix the paints up here. I just bought a little, you know, one dollar uh, palette from from the art supply house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need alum. Alum is something that we use. It's called a mordant in in uh, marbling. To a woodworker, I like to think of it as a primer that I've got to okay. put on the wood for the uh, paint to actually stick permanently. So it has instructions for how much to use per quart. I just I mixed it way down, and I'm going to apply it with a foam brush. I'm going to need something to put the paint onto the water or this carrageenan mixture with water. Mm -hmm. Eyedroppers work very, very well to do this. You can also, I bought a, a new whisk broom, not a used one, and I just cut out sections. And this is another oh, way to apply the color. I see that. And just tie it together with rubber bands okay. or, or... Yeah, it's just like, it's like a spatter tool. Right. What are these things? These are what you call the patterning tool. And uh, again, well, for serious... Well, it looks like a graining comb. You know, a woodworker would say it's like a graining well, comb. Well, in a way it works like that. I'm going to actually comb... And I'm going to pull patterns through the paint using that. And that's mm -hmm. about as simple as it gets. It's nothing more than toothpicks set into some <laughs> foam core. Okay. Again, a marbler would probably laugh at this, but I was doing it on such a small scale. Uh -huh. And I even went to a smaller scale, put needles or pins oh, in there. Because okay. for these tops, I produce some real tiny little patterns. Okay. And again, there's no expense here. And, and, you could... and they work. Could you also just take one pin and use one pin? Yeah, there's a type of not raking and producing patterns, but you can take a single pin or needle and you can control a pattern, pull it okay. through the colors. Or one of my favorites was to use a cat whisker. 
<laughs> so uh, believe it or not, a cat whisker works very nice for little fine delicate okay. patterns. So, so in a nutshell, what we're going to do here is create a pattern of paint on the surface of this solution. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take this piece of wood or the top, our wooden top, and we're going to transfer the pattern that we've created on this surface onto this surface. That's correct. Right? Now is this something that, that can I just kind of mix up paint and go ahead willy-nilly and be successful right away? No, you need to practice like okay. anything. And the best way to practice is on paper, something two-dimensional. And I have stacks of these, but these are ones how I actually learned it. When you go to your art supply house to buy some of these materials, ask them what paper they have they recommend for marbling. It's usually a heavyweight paper, 50, 70 pounds, no glaze on it, anything like that. And you uh, have to go through the same steps. You actually mix up your carrageenan, the same colors, the alum solution. So it's very good practice to understand okay. the process. So you do exactly the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. And actually, a two-dimensional, you're going to find out is easier than three-dimensional. Right. And again, what you've got to do is kind of get this surface onto that surface. With and, no gaps yeah, to and no to air. Transfer. No, it's actually okay. trickier so than it looks. Very good practice on paper to be able to right. do it on a, on a wooden surface. And quite inexpensive, cool. it's not expensive. None of this is expensive and it's a lot of fun once you catch on how to do it. Okay. What, what is it that you have to do to, to prepare this surface? Well, the first thing that you do is with your alum solution, once everything there is set, is just coat it just like you were painting but this needs to dry. Okay. Now there's some others here that I've done of you know five to ten minutes ago, and they're looking very dry because okay. we have so we'll be that kind of to, weather. Ready to use those. Guys. But just don't miss any place because if you do, you may find out that your color doesn't stick. Right. So let's start playing around with paint. Okay. The first thing I'll do is mix up my paint, and one more material you need. Uh, don't use tap water to mix your paint. So you're gonna you're gonna use thin distilled. the paint down. Right. right. I have to. This is way too thick. Okay. I'm just gonna do it with two colors you know, here to begin with. Now, there's different uh, forms of advice on how to mix this. And what one, one idea is to mix it to this consistency of milk. Or some say about 50-50 will get you started would that, here. Would that be whole milk? <laughs> Skim milk. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's all. That's the problem oh, with okay. advice like that, isn't it? <laughs> and then, then the next thing I do is uh, I'll borrow one of my toothpicks here and just kind of mix this up. Now that looks a little a little thin to me, but what I'm going to do is put some on on the uh, surface here in a minute, and I'll see. I've had better luck with it on the thin side rather than the thick side. The thick side, it tends to really drop. And I'll give you another tip. This is affected by weather sometimes. Uh, humidity levels and also different temperatures. I've let these things sit out for hours where everything's the same temperature. Okay. That seems to be one of the real variables. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this in one second. Let me do something. We've been sitting around for quite a while here talking and what's happened, I can already see it's collected dust. The oh. problem with dust on there, and I know this isn't the best thing to do in a woodworker shop, so if you can do it in the house and cover everything, these dust particles will, will leave blank spaces on your pattern. And so what I just do, I cut up newspaper that is the right width, and this is what we, we skim with, this is it calling, and just throw it in here. It screens off all the It does, now the dust is gone, because I can actually yeah. see it floating on there. Well, what I've done here is mix up the colors. I started with two, and I'm gonna add a little black. We're doing some experimentation here to see if I've got the right consistency. Had a little bit of it sinking, but I think... So you've been, you've been diluting the colors with the paint with distilled water, correct? Right. There, that, that's very nice. Now the, the turquoise color is what I'm having a little bit of trouble with. You see the color is dispersing across right. the surface instead of just sinking. Ooh, that's nice. I just show, ooh, beautiful though. Mmm, <laughs> that's floating good. Look at that. I got some bubbles and those are bad. Oh, that's very nice. Hmm. Get a little more blue in there. The goal is to get quite a bit of paint here onto the surface before I actually try to marble or do any kind of patterning. I'm going to go ahead and try to pattern here just a little bit. This area here is kind of doing some odd things, but this is my little poor man's rake. Let's see what kind of patterns I get here. Let me come that way. Oh my gosh, there's some nice patterns. Look at that. 
I know. like that. Huh. I like that. I like, right what's, going, I like what's going on up here. Now this is kind of a mess right here, so I don't know what we're going to get, but I'll still go through it. Sometimes simple is really well, yeah. And the idea beautiful. the idea is you can use any portion of this, especially for the small objects that we're well, going to work on. Well, see, that's one advantage You've we got have. Got an area here. There's another good area here. Here's the third yeah. area. The part that, that looks kind of homely right there, we just don't use that. We don't use it. We're not doing whole sheets of paper. Again, yeah. a professional marbler, marbler would be doing a, a whole piece of fabric right. or paper, and they would be... And their technique run. would be a little better than ours, Absolutely. Say. So this is a beautiful little area right in here, and I'll so show what's, you. So what's the, before you do it, what's the idea of how do you do this? I want to come in at an angle, and then I'm going to roll it a little bit here to where I don't have any gaps and really try to get very consistent over it. <laughs> there we go. That is beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. That was an area that I saw that I liked and so I captured it. There after I've rinsed it, uh, you know, you see what really is going to stay on and that's permanent. Uh huh. That's not going to... So if I touched it now, nothing would happen? Well, it, you know, I wouldn't touch it right now. Okay. It may still be a little bit. It's drying okay. very quickly. But I'm just amazed but at you really know, what's happening is that you saw the pattern here, and you yeah. literally transferred as you were doing it. I could see the paint lifting. It lifts up off the yeah, surface. Yeah, off it's the surface uh, onto the wood. And that's what I saw. There was a pattern in there. It almost looked like a little penguin or something in there that I thought that's really nice. Are these little shots of blue through there? Uh -huh. And that's what you do. You look at this, and I see some other real interesting patterns. All right. And we can go back and keep well, playing. Put this one down. Just put it right there. Let me try one now. Okay, now, now I thought I would, I'm going to try a little different area. I'm going to go for this area up here. More blue. And what you said, you kind of, you got to keep the whole surface, cover the whole surface and kind of roll it, correct? Well, come in where you don't have any air pockets, which you're not going to have okay. with this so much as with paper, but right. it is convex. So you want a real steady, even, you know, movement through the paint. Okay, and let's see. And do it slow and controlled yeah, is better than quick. Oops, go slow and then finger. twist and get it all the way around over to the corner. Wow. And that's what we saw. Well, How cool is that? Yeah. Okay, now we've each had a chance to try our hand at this. So let's take the, let's top. Do the top. Let's do the top. Let I'm me find you, a pattern you though, first. It. Let me find a pattern that I like. I'm going to go to and, something and even smaller. And so you smaller. can you can actually even you can change the pattern. You now can too, pattern can't you? the pattern, and <laughs> this and you can swirl it like this. Let me move it back and forth. That's going to give me a different look. That's interesting. I'm still starting to break up a little. See the little graininess? Mm -hmm. That's the start of it starting to break up on us. And okay. that's not undesirable to me. Sometimes that's that's very interesting too. It almost has a graininess like like. Uh, uh, wood, but right there, this is beautiful. I'm so move these two guys out here in the front, so we can. The top is difficult to hold on to. So what I get are dental picks. Okay. I've also made them out of nothing but a dowel with a pin, you know, glued in. And what I'm going to do is is oh. push in. Sure. Because I need something to hold yeah. it. Yeah. So that you can do the same kind of. There you go. Yeah. And this is the top. This is back. Now, unlike these knobs, I'm going to do what's called the wash over to do the back because on a top, you're going to see both you sides. You see both sides. Like so we you'll see this one. will be different from what we've been doing so far, but okay, I really put, like this pattern. This down here. There's okay. a real pretty pattern right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. And see if I can capture it. So I'm going to be sure I hit a corner. Now, here's the wash over. It's kind of hard to see till I rinse it. And there it is. I love that. Wow. See the swirl? That's just, it happened yeah. to be what we saw in that one little area. Yep. And again, this is something that a, a marbler dealing with large sheets of paper uh, doesn't have this luxury of picking a small little yeah. area. And now on the other side, this was what you called the washover pattern. And it's something, it's right. completely different. It's just as yeah. interesting. It's not the same pattern. It's, it's just a mixture the of the colors yeah. pulling over it. But on a top, I put that wow. down. Once in a while, it'll be very interesting. I'll leave it up. So what we do is let this dry. Um, if I'm not going to put any other finish, you could probably put it on the next day. But I let this okay. cure for a couple of weeks. And okay. then I usually uh, uh, maybe turn the stem then. 
And I can wax it if I wanted to, or you could wax it by hand and polish it, but it's a very tender finish. Just like epoxy paint you use in a house, it's still tender for a week or so. It takes a long D time to cure. It really does. Don't put a hot finish like a lacquer or something on this right now, or even some waxes. But after it's cured, I found for, a, you know, even a week, but two weeks, uh, I have no trouble with putting like a nice wax on it to give it some sheen. Wow. So, Alan, earlier you, you told me that for somebody who's new at this and wants to have more information and maybe a little more grounding than we're able to give in this video, right. you have a recommendation, and that's this book. I think this is just a classic. This lady has written a number of books, but this one she calls the ultimate marbling handbook, and I think it is. It's one of the best references I know of. And the author is Diane Maurer Matheson. Right. Just an excellent reference. All right. Well, Alan, thank you very much. This is like, it's like great fun. I mean, I can't wait to make more of these dumb 50-cent knobs look spectacular. Yeah, looks great.